Good afternoon, Pio Nation. I hope you're doing well. My name is Matt Williamson, and you are watching Married College Esports. In a matter of moments, our League of Legends team would be going up against Columbia College of Chicago in the Timo Cup semifinals. That's right. You heard it, folks. The semifinals. If Mariana takes this game, they will move on to the Timo Cup finals next week. Right now, everyone is in the lobby, so we're probably going to be starting any minute now. So let's take a look at the roster for our League of Legends. No changes as before, but still, we've got to be able to brag about our players. So in the top lane, we will have Senior Aaron Nee, MC Lyco Stradiata. At the jungle, we're going to have Kyler Wheeler, Raelic. In the mid lane, we're going to have Sophomore, Leo Witsikowski, Muki12345. At the AD carry, we will have Senior Ian Darling, Brimstone Bro. And then at support, we will have Freshman, uh, Bentley Holstein, Maxby101. I am already seeing the ready checks, so I'm going to make sure I have all the overlays set up. Uh, right now, Marietta is, looks like it's going to be on the blue side, and uh, Columbia is going to be on the uh, red side. Uh, as soon as we get things underway, we will get this match to you. It is a best of three series, uh, and we'll just see what champs are going to be picked, what champs are going to be banned. Uh, I'm really excited about this. Uh, they were actually a little concerned that we might have not been able to have this match today just because uh, Raelic did have a, a tennis match earlier, uh, but fortunately he was able to get uh, some scheduling stuff worked out so he was able to play his match earlier. So I do want to take a minute to give a special shout out to the Marietta College tennis team and their, their coach Spencer Thorne for helping accommodate uh, Kyler uh, Raelic's schedule and be able to let him play earlier so he can make it back in time. So we're able to have this match. So thank you so much, uh, Spencer, for being able to help us out. And also just with that note, uh, if anyone's wondering, uh, Rayla did very well in his tennis match uh, earlier. So I'm just going to pull up the scores he said. In his doubles, uh, he won 8-6. Uh, to six. And in his uh, singles match, he won the first set was 6-2. to two, And then the uh, second set was 6-0. to zero. So... Congratulations to Raelic on his victory uh, in tennis earlier today. So now we'll see uh, if we can get a victory in the League of Legends match. Uh, looks like uh, Columbia just needs uh, another minute. And I think they'll be uh, good to go. So yeah, we should be getting everything underway any, any second now. Uh, I'm going to guess that they're just going to try to uh, come up with their pick ban strategy but yeah it should be anytime now and once we get through the the draft i'll go over some uh additional announcements of uh what's been going on with our esports program and things that are ahead i mean we are we are getting close to the end of the the semester and that does mean that we are going to be getting close to the end of the season so all good things must come to an end but we will be back in the fall so really excited about uh, uh everything that is ahead of us we're still waiting for everyone to be ready so if you're wondering why there's some awkward silences i'm just kind of keeping my eyes on the uh lobby chat so once I know everyone is good, then we will get things underway. We're so close to getting this first match started up. I guess while we are waiting, if you have not hit that follow button, on our Twitch channel, this would be a great time to do it. It's a very simple process, just takes two seconds. You just see the little little heart simple thing, you just click on it. So we do want to thank all of our followers. Over 400 people have followed our channel. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated. Um, yeah, I mean, it's people like you that help make the our esports program uh, continue to, to run, continue to operate. So we are so thankful for uh, all of you who are watching and cheering on the the pioneers uh, this is going to be a a pretty good match i'm just looking over the lobby right now and just the ranks alone columbia is a a very good team they have uh their top laner is a diamond ranked 
and their mid ADC and support are all platinum. Now that's the current season. I'd have to pull up the OPGG to see uh, what their highest ranks are. In fact, I'll just go take a look uh, at their information here. So let's see here. Uh, the jungler is the gold. Uh, their mid laner, a plat. Uh, yeah, the top laner consistently diamond. Their uh, ADC first time hitting plat this uh, season. Very uh, good job there. But most have been gold before him. But okay, and then uh, supports. Has been diamond before. Okay, so this is going to be a very good team. But we're still waiting for Columbia Chicago to be... Uh, ready once we get but once we're told that they're ready then we should get things uh underway Alright, and it looks like uh, Columbia Chicago is ready. So here we go, folks. We are now at Champion Select, so we'll see what the picks and bans are going to be. Marietta will be banning first. And we're going to see Annie being banned, uh, I believe, far from Columbia Chicago. Uh, plays a lot. I'll probably, I believe they're also known as Renegades Esports, so I might just use Renegades instead of Columbia Chicago, but. Uh, but yeah, Far does play Annie a lot. We're seeing the Lily being banned by Renegades, so uh, Relic has played that quite often. We're gonna see Nivea being banned, so another target at the mid lane, really trying to uh, limit Far's champion pool. And we're gonna see the Kindred uh, being banned. Interesting choice. I mean, another target towards uh, Relic, but the fact that the Kindred said something else is very interesting. And then we're going to see the Volibear being banned. That could be a target to uh, Ricardo in the top lane. But it could... I've seen him in the jungle too, so that could be a, uh, a target to Ali. And there's the Hecarim ban. So, yeah, Renegades is definitely trying to completely ban out Relic. And Marietta will first pick that Seraphine. They love this strategy because they can flex Seraphine in the mid lane or at support. Sometimes I've seen it at, at bot, but unlikely. And Renegades is going to be hovering over the Ash. They're not, they haven't locked it in just yet. But they do lock that in. And yeah, it looks like they're they're looking at the Braum. It hasn't been secured just yet, but think about that Ash Braum combo. Ash is a really good uh, ADC right now. More of a setup type carry, but still a very good choice. They're gonna use the Braum as a frontline tank to protect the Ash. Now, how will Marietta respond to this? Looks like Brimstone wants to play the Bane into that Ash. Ooh, Brimstone does like playing Bane. He hasn't had a chance to play as much as he would like this season, but he is going to take it. And Mariana will blind pick the Gnar. I'm guessing they don't want to give away 
the uh, where Seraphine's gonna go. I'm actually surprised by this because they they're gonna blind pick instead of picking the the jungler because now I can see Renegades trying to take more junglers away from Relic and really limiting his pool. So there goes the Udir, but Renegades also picks the Malphite uh, to counter the the Nar. So we'll see how that matchup goes. Let's see what Mary Hill is away. They're gonna take away the Silas from Renegades. Silas is just a pretty strong pick right now. Uh, just being able to take away alts and just a major threat, so I can see, I can see that. End of the lap. And now we see Renegades taking the Graves away, just doing everything they can to shut out Rayleigh. But I think he still has a couple of picks remaining. I mean, he has played Olaf a couple of times, so I can see him going with that. And Verity will take away the Trundle from Renegades. I think they have played Trundle recently. So I can see Rayleigh going with the Olaf unless uh, Renegades decides to go with it for their next pick. And they do end up taking the Olaf away from Relic, So it's going to be very interesting now what he's going to be playing. Because a lot of his champions have been banned out now. I, pretty much everything he's played is now banned. So it's like, what is he going to do? He's going to go with the Kha'Zix. Hasn't locked it in yet. No! He's bringing out the Nocturne. He's going to be going for assassinations. I've not seen Rayleigh play Nocturne a lot, but this will be an interesting choice. And Marion is going to go with the Ari in the mid lane, so that is going to be a Seraphine support. So now it's just going to be a matter of what will Renegades do to counter that. I believe their mid laner likes to play assassins as well, like Yasuo and uh, Yone. But no is going to go with the Victor into the Ari. But okay, this is going to be interesting. Um, I would say just by look at the composition, uh, Columbia Chicago does have a pretty favorable uh, composition here. The carry is definitely going to be on the victor, but uh, they do have some great frontliners with Malphite, Braum, having the Olaf being able to charge in for the engage, but. Really, they have good engages for all of their, their champions. Whether it's the Malphi ulti, uh, Ragnarok from Olaf, the Ash Arrow, or the, the Braum ulti. So, yeah, it's a really good... It's a pretty good draft from, from Clone of Chicago, if, it, if I do say. On Marietta's side, they're getting the picks that they want. Yuki has her Ari, and... That usually gets banned just because she's very, very good uh, with the Ari. Brimstone got the virus. He loves playing the the, the virus. So our carries do got do have the champions that they want to play. Maximus feels very comfortable uh, with the Seraphine being able to the setup plays, get the the roots and the charms off. Uh, and Laiko does feel pretty good with the Nar. The only thing that's concerning is just the fact that uh, the Malphite was picked to counter the Nar, the Victor was picked to counter the Ari. And the fact that Kyler uh Raylick, sorry, is uh playing a champion that he's normally not used to. That's good. Now do I feel like he can play it? Absolutely. But he hasn't played it as much compared to the Lilia or the Hecarim or the Kindred or the uh or the Olaf or the Udir. So it's going to be interesting trying to go with an assassin type pick. But it does mesh pretty well with like Ari. You get the charm off and then you get the uh, the darkness off. So I... It's a feasible comp. The, the only downside is they only have Nar as a frontliner whenever he's Mega Nar. So we'll see... See how that goes. Uh, so while we're waiting, uh, just a, a, some schedule updates, not really updates, 
but um, actually it's not really much a point to bring up the schedule from this past week, but uh, our Pi Overwatch team played against Muskingum earlier this week in the uh, Concordia St. Paul Overwatch Finals, and unfortunately they, they fell uh, two to four, but they put on one heck of a performance uh, being down 3-0, taking the next two games. But uh, then Muskinga was able to uh, turn it around. And then yesterday, our Rocket League team uh, had one of the closest, most insane uh, games that we've ever had. Uh, they did take the win against trying 3-2, but four out of the five games went into overtime, including the last one. And shout-outs once again to our, uh, our captain, Baxter, for pretty much setting the pace and the tone for that game, getting the first uh, goal in that game, as well as the match-winning goal. But uh, as far as next week, uh, our League of Legends team it will have at least one more match. Uh, that will be next Thursday, 8 o'clock, against Defiance College. This will be the fifth-place match in the Great Lakes Esports Conference. And then our Overwatch team will have the seventh-place match uh, against Mountain Union. We are still finalizing when that uh, match will be. So we will get that out on social media. So if you're not following us on social media, uh, this will be the time to do so real quickly before we get this game up. So you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all at Marietta Esports. Uh, all of our matches will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash Marietta Esports. So if you wanted to see that insane Rocket League match from yesterday, we will have that up on YouTube next week. All right, we are getting things loaded up. So I'm going to try to make sure I have the audio and the UI settings and everything ready to go. I'm just waiting to get the screen to load so I can get the UI set up and make sure audio is good. Still waiting for everything to load, folks. It's just kind of taking its good old time. Almost there. The load percentage is at 96%. I'm not so sure why it hasn't finished. Now, now it's at 97. Now it's at 100%. Come on, let's get this game going. We're wanting to watch this League of Legends match. All right, there we go. Let me get the everything set with the UI. Get audio up and running. All right. We've been waiting very patiently for this, but here we go. Game one of this best of three series, Marietta College versus Columbia College Chicago for Renegades Esports. Marietta will be on the blue side and Renegades will be on the red side. Now we've seen some early pings by both Marietta and Renegades. But it doesn't look like there'll be any early invades. So we are seeing a little bit of a trading going on here, or at least some spells flying uh, flying around. The Malphite just kind of rolling that pixel brush. Olaf does an early back. I think he's just anticipating a possible invade. Uh, puts a ward down to see if Merida tries to do a late invade. They have done that a couple of times. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen here. You see some damage being traded. Uh, kind of in the top lane, although it's not really in top. Malphite is looking for a late invade. 
uh, into Marinus Blue Jungle, but Raelic is there. Okay, I think he's just trying to get an idea of where uh, Raelic is. So he's going to be able to tell the team, hey, Raelic's over by the blue buff. I think the big story here is just going to be how does Relic play a champion that he hasn't really played much? I mean, if he can get into the back line and take out the Ash or take out the Victor, then Marietta does have a good chance. But we'll just have to see. has been activated but right now Link is doing pretty well pushing up he does have a ward down by the river so uh, if Olaf does try to move up he will catch it and we do see Olaf heading towards there that ward is going to catch him and he's going to start falling back yeah caution's coming out Olaf's going to see that the uh, that brush has been warded See, there you go, folks. You haven't learned anything from that. Buy wards. That saves lives. If Vico did not have a ward there, Olaf would have gone behind. They would have taken him out and given first blood and taken that pretty big lead. But that ward saved him. Speaking of wards, we do see that Renegades has a pretty good wards down. They have the, uh, the Scuttlecrab ward in the top river, and they have two wards down in the uh, bottom river. And Red is going to get spotted here, but let's see if they can try to catch the victor. And does force the flash out of him. And that is one of the downsides with victor. He, he doesn't have a whole lot of mobility. He is a very powerful champion. But that lack of mobility could come back to bite him. So far right now, Renegades does have a uh, about a 400 gold lead. We're not in five minutes of the game. Still very early on. That's just coming down to the CS differentials. We're seeing that Malphite is having a pretty substantial CS lead uh, over Lyco. Just being able to zone him out uh, even has a level advantage. And just because the Q can automatically hit Lyco every time. Whereas with Lyco, his Q does not automatically hit the, the target. And by having that Corrupting Pot, uh, Malphite can continue to keep pushing and keep using Q and not go boom. At least not as uh, quickly as he could have otherwise. Right now, mid lane with the mid lane CS. Um, pretty close. Miki's down by just a little bit, but uh, a very small differential. Bot lane's pretty even, just a difference of like one, maybe two CS. Actually, now they're dead even at this moment. And Relic is. I'm sorry, no, Ali is looking for a possible play. And here comes the Olaf. Actually, does get removed, but Relic is not too far behind. He's going to be coming in with the counter gank. Shield comes up for Braum. Olaf is actually taken down by Brimstone using the ticks from his uh, abilities. Flash is going to be coming out for a sharper image, but it's not going to be enough. Maxi B will take it out. So Marina gets two kills for nothing. A lot of summoners were burned with that. Uh, Brimstone had to pop both summoners. Maxi popped the Ignite. Flashes were being used by both Sharper Image and Silver Vortex. 
but only Silver Vortex survives that fight. So with that, that's going to give Varus a very nice lead, getting a kill and an assist, and now taking a slight CS lead over Sharper Image. And I've seen what Brimstone can do on a very powerful Varus. It's scary. So if he can get that lead, ooh, this could be very interesting. Seeing that Maxi and Yuki are going to try to chase down. Victor does get charmed, and Brimstone is not too far behind. Storms, the ulti is going to come out for Victor. Barry's going to try to send away. Here comes the darkness, and there goes the Victor. We saw the Super Vortex and Aoi were trying to come from behind for a possible flank, but that great pick by uh, Relic just kind of changed everything. kind of resetting a little bit. Uh, definitely seeing a lot of vision control happening. Renegades is trying to put a couple control wards in their bottom river. Uh, Varia does have the top river pretty well warded. Braum was looking for a little quick hit, but doesn't quite connect. So that Marianne is up by about 1100, 1200 gold. So I mean, there's still some CS concerns. Uh, Yuki and Lyco are a little bit behind, but Yuki is trying to catch up, and it's just going to be a little hard for Lyco for now, just because Malphite does have the uh, the advantage. And Relic is looking to set up something, but. Clearing some vision, they may be going straight for a mountain drake. There is a control war by the pixel brush, and we see that with Ali and uh, Ricardo going for the Rift Herald, that is going to be an opportunity for Maria to take the mountain drake for free. You know, I feel it's going to try to get away, but it seems like Renegades will secure the. Well, no, he does not secure the Rift Herald. He was starting it up, but. Uh, I think it's saw Yuki was coming by, has to respect the, the, the Ari. Meanwhile, Rayleigh's going to take this advantage and invade uh, Ali's jungle. It's like, okay, you're going to try to take Rift Herald? I'm just going to take away some of your jungle. Ali's going to be a little disappointed when he goes to his jungle and finds that there's nothing there. And here comes Darkness again. Brimstone's going straight for the bot lane. And a huge charm gets both. Brimstone's going to do some damage. Takes out Sharper Image. And Maxime will take down the Braum. So another two for nothing. We see the ulti coming out by Malphite trying to get some damage with Lyco. He takes a turret hit, and Lyco's going to continue chasing him. But I don't think he's going to get a whole lot out of it. So once again, a beautiful setup by Raelic and allowing Brimstone and Maxi to get some kills. 
the Brimstone's now 2-0-3 with 91 CS, 11 and a half minutes in. He's starting to get scary, folks. Like I said, if he gets fed, Garus can really just rip and tear. I feel like I'm watching Doom. Just rip and tear. Alright, so we are at 12 minutes uh, into the game. Uh, and Marietta is up by just a little over 2,000 gold. Oh, Sharper and Simple, we're just gonna go up there and go, oh, well, there's no Drake, but they'll at least clear out the ward. Pinks are coming out, trying to caution Yuki, but yeah, it seems like Renegades is trying to get some uh, vision deep into Marietta's jungle. So, not going to get the flank, but yeah, they're trying to figure out exactly where Raelic is. Because so far, he's been able to set up some really good plays. Zeke is setting up plays. Really goes straight on to Victor. Although the ulti does come out, gets him very low, but he will escape. Doesn't even have to burn flash to, to get away. That is how confident Raelic is in his gameplay. He's like, you popped an ulti on me? Alright, I'll just run away. Doesn't even have to flash out of it. minutes in. Uh, Marietta is by up by about 1.5k gold, so... And here comes Darkness again. Goes straight on to the victor. Has to flash away. Really does get stung getting caught into the trap, but he does get out, so... Doesn't get the kill, but he does get another flash from victor. It seems like the plan is really to try to shut out this victor. Can be uh, very scary if he gets ahead. He's already... A, has a pretty substantial lead in CS compared to Miyuki. So even the fact that Miyuki does have assist, the fact that we just take a look at the amount of gold. Yeah, he does have about 400 gold more, 450 gold more than uh, Miyuki. So this is the fact that he's CSing well does make him a, a pretty big threat, especially when we get to team fights. So I know Red does want to shut him down. Uh, meanwhile, we see Ali uh, over by the Crypt Herald. And it should be able to get this. I mean, uh, the question ping is coming out. And Yuki is going to spot this. Going to go straight for Ragnarok comes off. Might have gotten there a little too early. Does end up going down to Alley. And I... Yeah, I mean, didn't really have any vision there. Should should not have gone... Yeah, I, I questioned that play. Kind of overextended a little bit and got punished for it. Meanwhile, we do see Apostle fight in the bot lane. Victor is coming down, uses the ulti already. And Renegades is going to start up the Infernal Drake, but most of Marianne is there. Teleports can be used. And here comes Darkness. Rayleigh goes straight, and he steals the Drake. He does die in the process, though, but he does get the steal. That is worth it. My goodness, Raelic has just been all over the place today. I mean, chat is already cheery on uh, Raelic so much. We're seeing the Raelic diff in the chat. But now we're seeing so much Raelic diff. Anyway, yeah, we do see that uh, Malphite is getting a pretty good lead onto Lyco. Getting that turret down pretty low. 
We may see the first turret going down in that top lane soon. Although it looks like uh, Ricardo is going to be backing out. So what's interesting is even though Marietta got that uh, Drake, those two kills was enough to close the, the gold gap. So now uh, Renegades is only down about maybe three, 400 gold. So it's not going to take much for Renegades to get back into this game. And it just comes down to that CS differential. We're seeing Victor now has over practically 40 CS ahead of Muki. That's, that's over a kill difference uh, in terms of gold. Uh, we're seeing that uh, Ricardo has about 20 CS ahead of Lyco. And we see Brimstone and Sharper Image. They're still pretty even on the CS. Here comes another Darkness. Goes straight onto Sharper Image. Flashes away. Now we see Brimstone getting another kill. Ulti comes out by Braum, but it's not going to be enough. He's going to get stuck. Flashes away, but Raelic is going to try to get the kill him and does so. So it's another two for nothing in favor of Mary in the bot lane. And that top tower is still hanging on by just a little bit, but it is hanging on. And now we're seeing Raelic maybe rotating up to the mid lane. See if they can catch Victor. Does not have his flash. But he did burn ult. Does, does not look like he's going to get the engage. No, he's just going to rotate out. And Brimstone actually will take down the bot turret first before uh, Ricardo is going to be able to take down the turret. We saw Miyuki got very low, but she was able to use her ulti to get away from the uh, from Victor's ulti. Uh, Yuki will teleport in to try to defend her tower. And there goes that tower in the top lane, but Merida does get that first turret gold bonus. So we are going to see Brimstone and Maxi start to rotate uh, to the mid lane. And we see a lot of wards coming out for Renegades. We see that top half of the uh, the jungle, hop out of the field. There's got two wards in the river. They got one uh, in Marietta's jungle. But yeah, Renegades wants to know exactly where Relic is at any moment in time. And Darkness is up again. And there's the Darkness onto the Victor. The charm comes out, connects, and Brimstone will get the kill. Here comes Olaf and Melfi. Does catch two with the ulti. Ragnarok is going to be coming out. Relic's going to get low. And Olaf will take him down, so right now it is a one for one. Brimstone is trying to put some damage onto the Malphite and Olaf. It looks like it is just going to be a, a one for one uh, trade there. But now that Olaf is going to get a little scary. He's at 3 1 0. But still a little behind on CS compared to Relic. Brimstone is going to try to poke down the Malphite, but Olaf is there to harass. And we're seeing most of Columbia Chicago is in that mid lane. It's basically a 4v2, maybe 4v3. And part of this Cloud Drake's up in 15 seconds. And Renegades wants this Cloud Drake. They have not gotten a Drake yet. First one was free for Marietta, and Raelix stole the Infernal Drake. So Renegades wants to push off this mid lane so they can go down to the Drake, but Marianne is not getting them that opportunity. But they're still pinging the, the Drake. They may just go for it anyway. There comes the Darkness onto the Victor. And the Charm's going to come out and Victor gets popped. And that's going to be Marianne's chance to go for the Drake. But Yuki and Raelic are keeping an eye out. Sharper Image and Silver Vortex are there. Ultis are ready to go. And the rest of Columbia is on there. So it's a 4v5. Ultis come out by Braum. And Olaf does get taken down. Yuki is going to end up falling though. And the rest of Mary's got the tree tree. Brimstone's coming in to try to get some damage out. Nar's getting very low. Chains is coming out for Brimstone. 
and it's a one for one trade. Both ADCs are down, and Marion will continue to chase the Brom. All that's left is the Malphite. The support with the double kill. And Marion will secure this trade. Well, they Malphite is still there. He's gonna put a ward down, but it gets immediately denied. So Marietta hangs on, wins the fight, and secures the Cloud Drake. So they already have three Dragon buffs. So they're just one away from the Cloud Soul. And we're only at 22 minutes in this game, folks. So Marietta has taken the lead. So I suck a substantial amount of upgrade. They were ahead for a while, but they've been able to expand that lead. So now they're up by about 2,300 gold at this point in the game. Here comes Darkness again, right onto that Victor. There comes the ulti. Ragnarok's gonna be coming out. Relic might have overextended just a little bit. A little trigger happy on just trying to keep killing that Victor. But once again, that kill will go to Olaf instead of Victor. At this point, Victor's only at 0-3-3. Does not have a single kill this game. Olaf should have allowed Victor to take that kill to see if he can get, get some gold. Because he is, well, he, He's still doing okay. Malphite is going to try to catch the Brimstone. And Malphite does take down Brimstone. Flashes away. Takes a couple of turn hits. Charm comes out. Does not connect. Mary is trying to chase. Malphite gets so low. And Flyco will take him down. Meanwhile, the rest of Columbia does take down uh, Seraphine. And we're seeing Columbia fighting back. They even, with those two kills, they've even off the gold. And now Columbia has taken the lead. So just like that, we went from Maria being up by 2.3k gold to now Columbia has taken the uh, the lead in this. I think it's because they, they get the shutdown gold from taking out Brimstone. So despite the fact that Maria is trying to prevent Victor from taking kills, I mean, let's just take a look at gold differentials here. Victor's still doing very well. Has pretty much 14, 1500 gold over Maxi. We see that uh, Malphite has a thousand gold over Lyco. And right now, the Olaf has more gold than Relic. So, so, despite the fact that Relic has nine assists, that Olaf is getting very powerful. But the one thing is, he is going to start losing that power spike as the game progresses. So Olaf is great for that early game. But we'll see. Aldi's going to try to carry this team being at 5-2-0. All the kills are on him. So technically if Marina can shut out uh, the Olaf, then they do have a pretty good chance. So this game's far from over, folks. Here comes the Darkness going straight on to the Victor again. All the alts are being popped. And Rayleigh gets taken out, and the rest of the area has to retreat. The charm does come out, and Maxime will take out the Olaf. Malphite does get the ulti in to try to take out Brimstone, and Victor will take him out, but Chains will go off to try to lock down the Victor. But I don't know if there's a whole lot that Marionette can do. So Renegade says they will take out pretty much Marionette's best players on Rayleigh and Brimstone. And it's a little concerning that Maxi, I mean, Maxi has taken quite a few kills, and those kills did not go to Brimstone. So actually, the support has more kills now, and that's extra gold that could have gone to Brimstone to be allowed to do even more damage. Let's see, the Renegade still has a goldie, but it's only about about eight hundred gold difference and part of this is also the fact that renegades does have three towers and marion has only been able to secure one so far they're about to get a second one so that's going to help them get some more gold but now they're going to have to fall back victor's there brahm is there victor does have the ulti ready raylick has an ulti ready but he's got to be careful now that uh that darkness is not going to really help if he goes right on top of the entire team and if and Renegades could just focus fire him down. Cloudrake is going to be up in 30 seconds. So we are probably going to see a fight here soon. 
Relic is trying to catch the Malphite. Super tanky at this point. We barely took any damage from the Nocturne. And we see the Braum all engaged onto the Gnar. Gets a shutdown. Charm is going to be coming out. But Brimstone's going to fall. Max is going to fall. That's three down already for Marietta. And we're just seeing how powerful this comp is from Renegades. Olaf being able to basically carry the entire game. Malphite has been is super tanky. There's nothing much that Relic can do at this point, unfortunately. Because after just trying to get some damage on it, he just wasn't taking any damage at all. The inhibitor tower is already down. They're already and they're gonna be taking out the inhibitor. And they're gonna go straight for the Cloud Drake and get their first Drake for the game. And actually, Olaf just solos the dragon instead. Renegades will take another tower. There it is gonna be rotating up. I Yeah. They're they're starting up the Baron. Very interesting choice. I think they're looking for a possible peel. Now the Hawk comes out. Renegades knows this. Marion is gonna fall back. Darkness is gonna come out straight onto the victor again. It's gonna pop the, the uh Zonyas, or no, the stopwatch to try to stay alive. Marion does pick off the the victor, but the rest of the team has fallen apart. So Maxi does charm three, but it's not gonna be enough to survive, and that may be enough to finish the game, unfortunately. So they're gonna go straight for the Nexus Towers. And they're just waiting for a minion wave to come in with the super minions. Really is trying to defend, but both Nexus Towers have fallen. Pops a stopwatch, but he's gonna get taken out. And Marionette will drive out Renegades. Tries to pop the chains, doesn't connect with anyone. Ragnarok's gonna come again, so they're going for the re-engage. And Marionette is split right now. Maxi falls, but so does Olaf. And Brimstone will get the shutdown gold. Malphite will re-engage with the ulti. Lyco gets very low. Brimstone falls. And Lyco is going to fall. So all that's left is Muki. And she's going to have to fall back. And I think the game is locked up at this point. I've seen this before. And I'm pretty sure that's meant that someone has left the game. I think Renegades has been able to uh, finish the uh, the Nexus because all that was left. And I'm pretty sure that uh, Renegades did take the first game. So game one will go to Columbia College of Chicago. Um, but Marina was doing well in the early game, but I think that that is not the correct score. Hold on, folks. Let me get that reset real quickly. So we're going to reset and update that. I think that's left over from our match yesterday. I guess I forgot to hit the reset button. So that is my mistake. So hold on, it's not three to one. So it should be zero to one. So let's fix that. Then. There we go, that's better, all right. Yeah, so I think a lot of this, I mean, Marietta did focus on shutting down the victor, but the problem then was that the the Nocturne didn't do very well when everyone was grouped up. Because at that point, well, Nocturne would try to alt in, but then the rest of the team would just basically collapse on Relic and take him out of the game.
But all right, we are getting things set up for uh, game two. This time, Marinette will be on the red side. So they're probably going to get draft set up. Oh, yeah, there it is. Now let's get over here quickly and let's see what adjustments Marietta will make. I think part of it as well is just Renegades is going to continue to ban out all junglers. Raylick needs to get another jungler that he's comfortable with. The Nocturne just kind of fell off near the end and the Olaf was to be able to, to get a bunch of kills and, and scale over. I think the other issue was kill allocation. Uh, Maxi took a lot of kills from there that should have gone to Brimstone and I think that would have made him a bigger threat if he was able to get some of those kills instead of assists. We're going to see the same bands from uh, Columbia, Chicago. Actually, it's not the exact same bands. We see the uh, Udiri band instead of the Hecarim. Okay. Marietta's taken away the Seraphine, so uh, Renegades cannot flex pick it. And they're going to first pick the Hecarim, which I think was e expected. So now we'll see how Marietta responds. At this point, I would say let's just get a jung let's get a jungler that Rayleigh can play uh, more comfortably, I should say. At this point, he could take the Olaf. He could take the Kindred. It looks like he's going to take the uh, Olaf. I think it makes sense. So that way he doesn't get uh, force picked into the, the Nocturne. So now we'll see what Marietta wants to pick next. And they're going to go with Lulu. That's going to be a support Lulu. So once again, Marietta's trying not to show their hand. They're trying to find opportunities for counter picks. So we're going to see sharper image possibly on that Ash again. Oh no, he's going to swap to Misfortune instead. And this Fortune has been strong all season. So will we see the support come out for uh, for Renegades as well? And they're going to pick the brand. I'm pretty sure that's a support brand. I'm pretty sure of that. But it looks like Renegades is saying we want to play aggressive. And it's already screaming that Marietta cannot be stacked up. That brand ulti, if Marietta stacked up, is going to be a huge problem. Hecarim getting a charge in with Marietta stacked up is going to be a huge problem. So they're going to have to make sure that they do stay spread out in any team fights. And Brimstone is going to take the Jinx to counter the Misfortune, which I think is a great pick. Uh, Brimstone does feel pretty comfortable uh, with that. We're going to see the Victor being banned. So interesting, I mean, Marietta was able to shut out Victor, but I mean, he still was pretty powerful just because he was able to out uh, CS Muki without too much issue, but they do not want that uh, Victor in this game. And it looks like we're going to see different mid laners from both sides since Renegade is saying, well, we're going to take away the R. We didn't like her either. And we're going to see the set being banned by Marietta, and Renegades is going to take out the Gnar. And it looks like Lyco is going to have it take his uh, turn with the Malphite. Yeah, it is going in blind, but he does feel very comfortable uh, blind picking the Malphite. Which makes sense, because they want to give Yuki a chance to uh, counter pick her lane. And it looks like we're going to see the Mordekaiser uh, for the uh, the top lane into the Malphite, which it's a good pick. Mordekaiser can be very scary if uh, Barry's not careful. And there's the Silas pick for the mid lane. It was not banned this time.
And okay, oh, um, okay. What? The Juke. We're gonna see Maxi on the Leona, which she feels very comfortable with. That Leona's been banned for quite a few games now. But we're gonna see Miyuki on Lulu into the Silas. Okay. I... I did not see this coming. I was pretty sure that was to support Lulu because uh, Maxi has played the Lulu. But okay, well anyway, so despite I, I'm still recovering from the shock of the uh, the Lulu mid for for Miyuki, but let's just take a look at the composition here. I think overall Marion has a very good comp here. Uh, I would say even better than game one, just because now we have uh, frontliners with Leona and the Malphi. Rayla can engage with the Olaf. Lulu can give some really good support uh, to try to help Olaf or Jinx. And Brimstone being that hyper carry, if he can get those kills, then that's going to give him a good advantage. Looking at uh, Renegade's comp, they are looking for blood. They have the front line with the Mordekaiser, but he's definitely going to try to take one player out of the game. He's probably going to try to use his ulti on Olaf, if I were to guess. He's trying to make sure that. Uh, Olaf is not in the team fights and saying 1v1 me bro. Uh, but then we see the engages with the Hecarim, uh, with the brand that's going to say if you're grouped up, you're dead. But Marietta has to make sure they're not grouped up uh, during any team fights. And even with this fortune with her ulti getting one grouped up. Oh well, I, I see the Wombo combo now. Oh my goodness. So you got the Hecarim ulting in, fears everyone. This fortune pops the ulti at the same time and the brand ulti. That's going to be a ton of damage to the group. It is critical that Marietta is not grouped up during any team fights or they are going to get hit with triple ults. And then who knows what ult Silas would take away. I mean, you can take or not take away, but copy. Copy the Malphite art ult and charge in and get a big knock up or copy the Leona ult and try to get everyone stunned. So there could be some huge wombo combos uh, from Renegades if Marietta is not careful. I'd still say that Marietta can take this, but I think the challenge is going to be in that mid lane. Silas will probably out CS Yuki. No disrespect. But I mean, Far is a really good player. And I think it's going to come down a lot with the, with uh, Far and uh, Ricardo. Getting very tanky. It's going to make it difficult for Baron to do any damage to the Mordekaiser. So they may have to get to the point where they say, just ignore the Mordekaiser and go straight for the Hecarim or the Misfortune. But we will see. The game will be loading up in just a minute. Uh, Marietta does need to take this if we want to go to a game three. Uh, otherwise, this will end Marietta's run in the Teemo Cup. And Renegade Esports will uh, move on to the finals. All right, so now we're just waiting for the game to load up. All right, we see quite a few nice skins there. We see the Broloff. I mean, whenever there's Olaf, it has to be Broloff. It just has to be. All right. We get everything set up. That. And then get the audio. Oops, give me a second here. All right. Now we're just waiting for everything to load in. 
Maybe? Here we go. Everyone's starting to load in. So here we go. Marietta College versus Columbia College of Chicago. Game two. Marietta's going to be on the red side this time. And Columbia Chicago Renegade Esports will be on the blue side. Marietta may be looking for a possible invade. To or at least just a couple people grouped up. I guess they're trying to see if they detect any invades. See if Marina is gonna try to catch anything. Maybe see if they can catch the the brand, or maybe go for a late invade to get uh, a little bit of vision. You can see Yuki nearby too. So now we got four people, and here comes the late invade from Relic. Gonna try to catch any wards. Not gonna see anything. They may be seeing a fight. And here comes Raelic right on top of the team. And Marietta secures first blood. And they poke down Brand pretty low. And Raelic's gonna steal that red buff. And a little bit more. So great play there by Marietta to uh Kind of set the tone early in this game. And now we see Rayleigh maybe going for another early play. Never mind, he's just going to run by. This is kind of like, hi. And the stun. And Rayleigh will flash in, forcing the flash from Silas. He's just walking up and like, you know what? I'm going to try to kill you anyway. The thing that is going to help is that is going to basically set back uh, Hecarim. Just not being able to have access to his red buff. And great macro play by Relic to rotate back to his red jungle just to prevent uh, Ali from having an opportunity to get the red buff. is going on right now. I mean, we do see a pretty decent lead in the top lane for Ricardo, which we would expect just how well he uh, performs. But we're seeing right now CS is pretty even in the mid lane. Because Raelic does connect the axe onto Mordekaiser, puts a bunch of damage, forces the flash from him. And Muki's doing a pretty good job getting some damage onto Silas. Does force the flash from her though, right as the camera left. But Yuki having that extra range does put her in a little bit of advantage. Let's see, Brimstone is at about half health. He still has his heal uh, if needed. Meanwhile, Brain will continue to try to capture anyone in the brushes. So despite the fact with the early gold lead that Mary had with the, the first blood, uh, Renegades has fought their way back and they are now even up and it's because of those CS differentials. 
Even the bombing right now, Sharper Image is doing much better compared to Brimstone. The Brimstone's got to find opportunities to get some CS and not be zoned out. But here comes Relic trying to look for an opportunity. But the Axe does not connect. They're trying to give Brimstone a chance to uh, catch up on CS. Nice polymorph there by Miyuki, which kind of disrupts Silas from being able to keep up, keep on attacking. Relic's gonna be working his way up. There is no vision. Oh, oh, there is a ward there. And a huge ulti by Lyco to catch Ricardo. And Relic's gonna be coming in, trying to get the engage. Ulti comes out for Ricardo, trying to 1v1. Relic does take him out, but Lyco will get the kill. But now we're gonna see Renegades be able to start with the Ocean Drake. Since Relic was up there, it is gonna be a free Ocean Drake for uh, Renegades. Right now, gold is pretty even. A slight lead out by Renegades. And a lot of that's coming down to the CS differentials. We're seeing that Silas has blown the CS lead wide open compared to Muki from last time we were checking. 50 CS to 34. Uh, and even Sharper Image is having a better game uh, versus Brimstone. And Relic is going to be looking for the Axe. Does force the Flash out of Misfortune. And we're even seeing that Ali has gotten ahead in CS compared to Relic. Uh, so despite being shut down earlier, uh, he's been able to just go farm. He hasn't been doing any gank attempts. Meanwhile, Relic has been trying to gank after gank after gank. And that means that he's been falling behind on his camps. I see bullet time being used by Misfortune to clear out the waves, the, the venue waves on the uh, the tower. Just trying to get more CS. Relic is looking for an opportunity for a gank. Polymorph does come out and connects with Silas. Gets him down to about half health. And here comes the engage that Relic is looking for. Uses the... the Silas uses the uh, Lulu ulti. Does flash away to survive. We're looking for another possible catch. Lulu is going to be popped. The ulti more comes out, and so is Ragnarok. And Rayleigh does get the kill. 
onto Silas. Ricardo gets very low. So despite the, the CS lead, Lyco is pushing that lane. And trying to keep him low in health. I think we're seeing about an 11 CS difference in the bot lane with the AD carries. Carter is trying to catch like a pops the ulti does take him out unfortunately and that's going to help him expand that gold even further right now we're seeing once again ricardo and far are just having monumental cs uh differentials and that's part of the reason why granite gates is still uh, ahead by about 800 gold even though marianne has four kills But like of being taken out, it's going to be a free Rift Herald for Renegades. So they'll use it to push the lane down. I'm sorry, Infernal Drake's going to be up in about 55 seconds. We're seeing another possible gank attempt in the mid lane. Silas is going to be winning against Polymorph. Does get hit by the axe. Ragnarok is going to be coming out. Double Ragnarok is going to be coming out. Relic flashes in. Gets Silas down very low, but just not enough to finish him off, unfortunately. And Brimstone does get taken out by Sharper Image. And that's going to give them the, a chance to push that lane. And meanwhile, Ali's going to be able to solo the Infernal Drake. And there's nothing really Marietta can do about it. I mean, right now, the problem is... Renegades is winning all three of their lanes, technically speaking. So it's really hard to get any objectives when all three lanes have fallen behind. Brimstone's got to be careful. We see a great stun there by Leona. Can Brimstone follow through with this? Ali has to use his ult to get away. And Miss Fortune is going to use her ulti to keep Brimstone from re-engaging. That's just good coordination by Renegades. But Relic is still going to be chasing down uh, Renegades. Rift is going to be using the top lane to put some pressure up there. Meanwhile, Relic is going to try to steal a little bit of the red jungle. It's going to get spotted out. And we're going to see Relic try to get the re-engage. Ulti is going to be coming out by Silas. He's the Leona ult. And Olaf does take down the brand. Lulu all comes down to keep Relic alive. Silas does have to flash away. And Relic is going to take down Ali. So right now it's a two for one. If you're Marietta, Malphite teleports in. The re-engage the charge takes out Misfortune. Ulti comes out for... Uh, Vorderkaiser to zone out the Malphite. So right now it's a 3 for 2 And the Vorderkaiser does charge in as well. Relic is going to try to take down Relic, but gets shut... Uh, Relic is going to try to take down the uh, Silas, but gets shut down by it. So with all that said, I believe... And, uh... Oh, you hate to see that. At that point, um... They just need to get out. They just need to get out of there. But ultimately, Renegades did win that fight. So now they have a 3.2 gold lead. 3.2k gold lead uh, less than 15 minutes in. 
And now it's gonna make it even more difficult for Marietta to try to come back in this game. They're gonna have to do some major farming. They're gonna have to find the individual picks. No towers have fallen yet, but with Renegades winning all three of the lanes, it's just, it's gonna be really difficult to defend the towers much longer. See that gank attempt in the top lane are engaged by Renegades. Red is trying to take down the uh, the Mordekaiser, but doesn't quite work. Mordekaiser getting a double kill there. But then Mary is trying to get kills in need, and this is going to be a dive onto Yuki trying to defend the tower, but it's going to be in vain. She's going to end up falling, and this fortune does secure the first tower for Renegades in the bot lane, and that's two towers. So what was a 3.2k gold difference in just a few minutes ago has now turned into over 6.5k gold difference. But at this point, Mordecai's are being at 6-1-1. One, one. He may be unkillable. But Mary's got to find other opportunities, find other kills. Rarely can't even go into his jungle. He's getting zoned out. Full time does come out. Ragnarok's going to be coming out. And the ulti from Brand just takes out Relic, but... Maxi there with the double kill. Just getting a little bit of gold back for Marietta. And actually steals the blue buff from the from Renegades as well. Mordekaiser does get Polymorph. Is it 3 3 1? Ulti's gonna come out and takes out Yuki. Grimstone's gonna be coming again to re engage, but here comes the rest of Renegades. Grimstone does get taken out, and Maxi's gonna fall. Lycra's the only one that's standing by the mid tower. And anytime Meridian's trying to get a, a numbers advantage on the gauge, the rest of Renegades is there to counter that. And this is gonna be a free Mountain Drake for Renegades. Granlick is there, maybe looking for a possible steal, but he, he gets pulled in. He's gonna pop Ragnarok. He's gonna go straight for the dragon, see if he can get the steal. Gets taken out. So that's a kill and a Mountain Drake for Renegades, and they are looking for more. Lyco and Yuki are in the mid lane as well as Maxi trying to see if they can defend this tower. But at this point, I don't know what else can be done. Uh, is going to be going for the Rift and solo that. Meanwhile, uh, Far is in the uh, bot lane, split pushing, and will probably take down this tower by himself. And Maxi does get the kill onto Brand, but once again, three of the kills are now onto Leona. That's not what you really need. The, the kills need to go into some of the carries. Proton does come out, and Brimstone's going to try to get the stun and gets a root onto. And Brimstone does pop the rocket to take out uh, Misfortune. 
So that's another kill. We like Raylan is trying to get onto Hecker, but he's gonna have to use Ragnarok to get out. Leona is kind of there to help. Ulti's gonna come out for uh this keep Raylan up, but now gonna get gonna re-engage onto the rest of the team. Brimstone is gonna have to flash away, but it's not gonna be in enough. It's a one-for-one -one trade. Olaf actually gets two kills, but and shuts down Silas. So it's three to one right now in Marietta's favor. Although Barcaster does take down Brimstone. Now see Raylick's gonna take out the support. So right now it's just Mordekaiser versus Raylick. And Mordekaiser flashes in and gets the quadra kill. So the sole survivor of that team fight. And now Renegades is up by just a little less than 8,000 gold. They're gonna pop the Rift Herald and that's gonna secure that 8k gold lead. They use the Rift Herald to push even further. So Marianne is getting some kills. The problem is just that Mordekaiser being at 12, 1, and 4. He is carrying this game by himself. And even with Ailic at 864, I don't know what can be done to answer that uh, the Mordekaiser. There it is, trying to catch a block out. The other ult's gonna be coming in and the, the charge. Actually popping two ults there onto Mordekaiser. And he's still alive. Takes down one before going down. And the rest of Renegades is going to re-engage. So it's a two for one in favor of Renegades at this point. Although Rayleigh does get the double kill. But he's going to end up falling to four from Marietta Fall. And they only get two. So that's going to allow... Renegades to try to go for more. They're gonna go straight for the mid lane and see if they can get that inhibitor. And they do get the inhibitor and they're gonna back away. But now Meridian is gonna to have to be careful. If they lose another team fight, that might be enough for Renegades to finish the, uh, the game. Silas does take the Leona ulti, looking to try to use that for the next team fight. Mountain Drake's gonna be up in 55 seconds. That may be where the, the next fight will be. And we see Renegades going straight for the Dragon Pit, setting up vision and getting everything so, uh, secure. So that as soon as that Mountain Drake spawns, they're gonna go straight for it. And if they get it, they will get Mountain Soul as well. Yeah, we just see so many wards in uh, in the jungle. Renegades has wards everywhere in the uh, the bottom half of the map. In fact, we see they're going to be looking to get a flank onto to Marietta. Okay, here comes the engage that they want. Leon's going to catch two. Yuki's already going to be taken down. Rayleigh has to pop Ragnarok to try to stay alive. Does take out the Bram. Hecarim ult is going to catch Rayleigh. He's going to go down solo Brimstone. So three for the Pioneers have already fallen. And Renegades is saying they don't need the Dragon. They're going to go straight to try to finish the game. And Lyco is trying to get that last fight in, trying to get the gauge. Pops the ulti, but he's going to get taken out by Silas. Gold time is going to be coming out to take out Maxi. Yuki does get the shutdown onto Silas, though, so it's not over yet. Turret is doing quite a bit of damage onto the team. Brimstone gets the shutdown onto the Hecarim. One Nexus Tower falls, and Raylick is looking to try to take out Mordekaiser. And does get the shutdown. So the base is in shambles, but it's not over just yet. And Rayleigh and Muki are going to go straight down to the, the uh, Mountain Drake. Silver Vortex and Sharper Image are around there too. We may see a 2v2 fight there. Meredith is going to start up the Mountain Drake.
Marietta does secure the Drake with the uh, the smite. Actually, I don't even know if that. Yeah, that was a smite. So okay, we're at 25 minutes. Renegades is up by a lot of gold. It's about it's a 9,000 gold lead at this point. Super minions are going down the mid lane. But Marriott is not out just yet. So at this point, I mean, Relic is pretty powerful. He's at 12, 8, and 4. If Marriott can get the Mordekaiser under control, then it's winnable. But the other problem is all the gold is going to be on Relic. So he's going. So if Renegades does take him out, then that's going to be the fight. We do see that Renegades is going to secure the Baron, and they're going to try to use this to finish the game, I think. We just see like it does get caught. That is not what Marietta needs. And Yuki's going to get caught too. Has to pop the ulti to stay alive. Relic is trying to chase down the Mordekai. So three of the Pioneers are trying to chase. Ulti's going to be coming out. Pops the stopwatch. Actually, no, it's a Zanya. Sorry. And already takes down two. Takes down Relic and uh, Maxi. Meanwhile, the rest of Lyco is trying to get onto the Nexus for taking out the remaining tower. And with four of the Pioneers down, that's the Nexus and that's going to be the match. So unfortunately, Marietta's run in the Teemo Cup has come to an end uh, by falling to uh, Columbia College Chicago. But yeah, I mean, Marietta did everything he can. It just, the Mordekaiser, I mean, Ricardo was just a phenomenal player today. 18-3-8 in that last game. Uh, far finished 8-3-10. I mean, Relic had a good game, but 12, 9, and 4, but Renegades was basically trying to shut him out. And whenever Relic fell, the rest of the team fell with him, unfortunately. But even though Marianne did not make it to the finals, by placing the top four, they do uh, win some riot points. But unfortunately, that does mean that there will not be a, uh, a match next Saturday. But our League of Legends team will have one final match uh, in this season. Uh, they will have their 5th place match in the GLDC against Defiance College. That is scheduled for next Thursday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. So hopefully you do <clears throat> excuse me, do come back to check that out. Um, and of course our Overwatch team will have one more match too. We just don't know when it is yet. So for all the latest updates with what's going on with Marietta Esports and knowing its schedules and opponent information and everything, please be sure to follow us uh, on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all at Marietta Esports. All of our matches will be uploaded to our YouTube channel at bit.ly slash Marietta Esports. So thank you all for watching and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day.